Hi, welcome to Rock Down. I'm Wendy Stapleton. Well, there wouldn't be many punters who haven't heard of Dean and Carruthers, or Bluestone for that matter. However, my next guest actually started his career singing at the Malvern Town Hall at the tender age of 15 years old. Would you please welcome the Peter Pan of rock and roll, Mr Terry Dean. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> Peter Pan and Wendy, we're... <laughs> uh, we were made for each other. How are you? I'm very well. Very, very good. Now, I'm. am I imagining, are you a, an Essendon boy? Absolutely. From way back? Mooney Ponds, Essendon, St Monica's. Yeah. I was going to say maybe that's where I met you, but... Not at St Monica's, no, no. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, let's start at the beginning. Um, your family were musical? Uh, yeah, well, my, my father and uh, all his brothers, I, I had an uncle who was a professional piano player. There's just, I used to see him going out every night in his dinner suit and everything, and, you know, playing at all the lodges and stuff, and my uncles all sang, and they, they could all play piano, it seemed. So, so it's uh, in the family. I know, I know for a fact that you've got sons who are fabulous musos as well. And my son Jamie's a pretty uh, cool guitar player, and, and uh, my youngest son Julian's a DJ. What can Can't you say? Help <laughs> so um, I was actually very surprised. I've known known you for quite a long time, and um, I think the first time I actually saw you play was at Demarco's mm. in Essendon um, in a band called Bluestone. However, your career started way way before that. Yeah, I started. Um, I think the first pay I ever received. So that you consider yourself a professional was when. I think it was Laurie Arthur that stuck three dollars in my top pocket at uh, three bucks. I mean, my whole wage for, for working that time was about was about ten, or oh, pounds. It was pounds in those days. But um, that was with the the strangers at uh, the Gordon Grove dance, and then I um, quickly went on to join the Capri dance promotions, which was Malvern Town Hall, Springvale Town Hall, the Edith Vale Rock. And, and that dances. that was sort of run by um, promoters that moved all of the singers around. Is that correct? To, yeah, to we different were, venues. Yeah, different and... venues. Yeah, well, the 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 main band was the Premiers. Um, and that was the Premiers were one of the top bands. You had you had two sides to Melbourne. You had the you had the northern side with Preston Town Hall, and uh, the other side of the river was was Malvern Town Hall with uh, and, and Johnny Chester was on that side, and Bobby Cookson was the star on the other side at uh, Malvern Town Hall, and they were huge dancers. Hey, how, how did you start playing with The Strangers? Um, well, I used to work in, I used to work in Myers. Um, I was an apprentice barber in Myers, and I used to walk to the station through the back of Allen's store in the city. I met a guy called Brian Holden, um, who had a band, and that's I started singing with their band, and then I, um, he introduced me to Laurie one night, who was the the um, lead guitarist of The Strangers at that time. And um, he in invited me out to, to get up and sing with The, with, um, the Strangers at Gordon Grove. So, so in the very early Strangers, yourself? And I wasn't in the band. You I weren't was, uh, in, no, no. like a guest? In, the, in those days, I mean, the band was the main thing. And, and the band mostly played instrumentals. They didn't play, didn't sing. They'd have a bunch of singers. So there was Ian McCausland that the, the, used to sing, who was, went on to be... Famous as McCosmic, the great graphic designer, oh, okay. designed all the album, Skyhooks albums covers, album covers and stuff like that. Oh, really? So it was Ian and um, myself, a couple other people around. Uh, Noel Watson used to Peter? Used to sing. Peter Peter Robinson on bass. Yeah. yeah. First time I ever saw an electric bass was watching Peter. I can remember what he was he was what he was playing when I walked in that first night. That that dance at Gordon Grove uh, was just amazing. It was a police boys club type place. And the stage was the boxing ring, pushed, pushed against the wall. So this white stage, and and Ian McCausland then was still doing art. And they, the strangers had this amazing sign that was designed by him. Was, a, was that in Pasco Vale? No, or? it was in, in Gordon Grove. Gordon Grove. Yeah. Where's that? Gordon Grove's in Gl oh, Glenroy. Oh, Pasco Vale, Glenroy, picky, picky. <laughs> Not when you lived in Pasco Vale. <laughs> If you're on your way home, you get awfully lost. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, it's right next door. Uh, I yeah. sort of meant that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Glenroy. The Glenroy dance, it was just, uh, it was amazing. It was packed out and um, 
with this band with uh, with Brian Holden, we became the strangest sub band. Right. So that in those days, if if they went away to do another job, then provided you had the nod from them, you're fine. If you if another band came in, you'd get beaten to death. So it didn't matter whether we were good or not, because they said we could do it, that we were accepted. It was very territorial, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. Like even even the, the style of music, and as you said, um, south of Vieira and north, there was mm. a huge divide. Yes, there's a whole, there's a whole band of, of musicians came from that area, from um, Glenroy right across to Preston and around that way. The whole social structure and so many musicians you could just go on, on forever that... that Came from that, that came from that, that area. That area yeah. yeah, the band that was initially set to be the band on the Go Show was the Premiers. Right. And um, but unfortunately, when, when Dennis Smith and Julian Jover, the producer, came along to see talk to the Premiers one night, the Strangers were playing as well. So. Uh, so things, what happened? Here? Things changed. <laughs> I don't know what it changed. Things changed. So, uh, but. Fortunately, I had a, and uh, we, we all did that with the premiers. We, uh, most of us that, that end up on the Go Show did a virtually an audition night at, at, at uh, the old Morty Alec dance one night, and uh, that's how it all started off. And you were a regular. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about um, that, because it was one of the first sort of, was it pop, pop shows in Victoria anyway that was... Absolutely, yeah, it could, because everything else then was Sydney. Like Sydney, at that time, if it's shows that came out of Sydney could have been shows that came out of America or the, it were, that was so far away from Melbourne that, um, it, that you know, guys like Johnny O'Keefe and, and Cole Joy, they were, they were gods, you know, to yeah. us. And um, they would only come down to do major shows in, in Melbourne at the Festival Hall and things. But... Um, Really, I think the the catalyst for the whole thing was uh, Bobby and Laurie, Bobby Bright and Laurie Allen. They had a national hit, and that coincided with um, um, Dougie Young and Tilbrook starting the Go Show on Channel Ten, and they were the main stars of the Go Show. They were the main draw, so it was, they were they were a national act like that. And uh, the, the the shift came to Melbourne. Melbourne became the, the, the place where everybody to came. To be. Yeah, the place to be. The place yeah, to even be. bands like um, the Easy Beats, they started here in Melbourne. They played in Sydney, but they, their career kicked off here. I remember them coming down to do a showcase at a place called the Surf Rider, in, which was Melbourne's first teenage nightclub. That was um, on uh, Beach Road Black Rock. It was just an, an old cabaret room. And when I w went... The first time full time as a musician, you know, I've always been pretty pragmatic. So I had a room above the surf rider. My uh, bed and breakfast was paid for by doing one show a week there, and there was a hamburger shop up the road. So I was set. <laughs> you were set for life. <laughs> set. set for life. Yeah, we were set for life. We're just going to do me one gig. It was just one day, going to sing five songs because that was that was the nature of the of um, the dancers. You just go out and do. Five songs. Songs. And that's it. So, and <laughs> stay, but you have to stay all night, um, and and everybody would be on stage at the end of, of the night, all singing "What did I say?" Or, and they never ever found out what I say. Stop they kept, it. Kept asking the question, "What did I say?" <laughs> we'll take a short break and find out what he said when we come back. <laughs> rock down. Welcome back to Rock Down. I'm with Terry Dean. And you were living on top of Surf Rider, which sounds very, very, very convenient. Oh, it was was very <laughs> in lots of ways. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great place. It was, it was uh, I was I was about eighteen, and um, so you had a car, obviously. Yeah, I had a car. Well, I had a mini deluxe. Did you? Was, yeah, I was rich. Uh, no, <laughs> um, my first car was um, was an Austin A thirty, which burnt more oil than petrol. And um, a lady called, uh, um, that's bad, isn't it? Carol, who was my manager uh, at the time. And someone told me it was bad for my image, so I went and borrowed money off, off Bobby and Laurie for a deposit on a, on a new mini. So Now, were you playing at that stage or just mainly singing? Mainly singing, yeah. So you didn't need the, the sort of car that had room for the little PA? And, no, and, and, although we did it with, because uh, the first band that we form then it gets more complicated was the mixtures so it was Terry Dean and the mixtures 
doing things. We went to Adelaide with the full drum kit in the back. Two of the guys went on the on the train, and um, mix, the original mixes was John Creech, the creature, uh, the creature, uh, Laurie Arthur, yes, and Rod DeClerc. Uh huh. So, um, but we had a you know, people remember these things. We we used to do lunchtime gigs in the city. And I used to work. I was still working in Myers as a, as a barber before this, before I left. And we used to play this place called Tenth Avenue, which was above a shop in Burke Street. So I'd take my lunch hour at twelve thirty to one thirty, run across and do an hour there. And it was half of Normie's band with with um, uh, with Laurie Arthur and. Uh, so this is Normie Rowe with Normie Rose, with, yeah, yeah. If, if half of his band and half of the band that I was in with Laurie Arthur at the time. And somebody asked one day what, what the name of the band was, and we said, we haven't got a name, but it's a mixture. Are you serious? That's how you got that, it? That's how the name came, yeah. And then, then when I, I, I found the, uh, the uh, bass player, Rod, I, in Tasmania when I was over doing some shows, and he came into Melbourne, and John and Rod and Laurie got together, and that was the original mixtures. The original three-piece mixtures was a great rock and roll band, and we, we actually got back together again, you know, during a short break, the guys went off and... Go, you know, Rod went to Vietnam and with the army and all that kind of stuff, and we got back together again, and that was the that was the basis of Bluestone. Oh. So with John, who was in John Creature was in Bluestone with me, and absolutely, uh, and uh, and Laurie Arthur was in it for a time. So, how early did Bluestone start? Well, the original band there that was nineteen sixty nine at Demarco's, wow. in there with my brother playing drums. And uh, the band was literally formed on stage at DeMarco's in Essendon. Uh, my brother had an old time band there and um, he invited me along to, to sort of sing one night and I stayed there for 15 years. <laughs> and we, and uh, we, we added members to the band. As they, yeah, as yeah, they left and, one, and one New Year's Eve at DeMarco's was just John and I, my brother and I, just with the whole place packed and... We were thumping it out, and it was that, that was a great gig to make us. Well, I remember that's as I said earlier on, that was where I first saw you. I think the lineup I saw was um, Johnny, mm -hmm. um, Creech, yep, Everybody. Nigel, yep, and Gavin Anderson, yep. So, how far along the, the, the lineup changes was that? That would have been about six years, yeah. you see, like, like, like because. The uh, yeah the first band was just John and I and, and whoever we could get and then uh, eventually um, what used what used to happen on a Thursday night I used to work at the same time I used to sing at the Council Club in Preston with the original mixtures John Laurie and, and Rod they had a, and the band was called Action then so they'd got back together as a new band and they do Monday and Tuesday as a three piece and Wednesday and Thursday I'd join them to make it a four piece. And, but on Thursday night, I'd do DeMarco's first, 10 o'clock, jump in the car, race over to Preston, and then do a floor show at Preston, uh, and uh, either with Laurie or with the, Mike Burke, the pedal steel player who was in Bluestone. We had a pedal steel player first. So we, we just, you know, we just worked all the time, just mixed it all up. I mean, just constantly. We worked uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. That was, you know, and they were, they were mostly um, resident gigs too. I mean, we had the residency at DeMarco's for 13 years. And then the, the Golden, Golden Gate. Gate. The Golden How Gate. long were we there? 15 years. The Golden Gate, I remember, was... Uh, now, you probably did other nights as well, but I remember, was it Saturday or something? Saturday, Saturday, Saturday afternoon, afternoon. Saturday afternoon and Wednesday night. Packed. Yeah, absolutely. You, you couldn't get in. You couldn't get in. It was amazing. You then moved on... To form a, a partnership with uh, Gary Carruthers. Gary Carruthers, mm. um, and I know for a fact that that was a, the success of that sort of was equal to Bluestone, in as in as much as pulling punters. He probably greater. Even greater. Yeah. You realise you're making me very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> we'd we'd le we'd leave the town hall hotel, drive past. What was the pub in Punt Road? Oh, the New Boundary. The New Boundary, and that was a Saturday afternoon too, was it? No, New the, Boundary is Saturday night. Saturday night? Mm. Oh, okay, I can just remember driving past and looking at the crowd going, 
Hmm. Yeah, this, uh, well, that was that was ten years as well. Yeah. I seem to uh, like have a knack for getting to somewhere and staying there. Yes, but there's got to be more to it than that. It's not just the knack of staying there. It's the knack of obviously playing what people want. Mm. So you obviously have always had the knack of being able to read, yeah, I read a crowd. Um, I don't know. I don't even know that that's true. I've thought about it because I've, I've only ever played stuff I like playing. And in Bluestone, Bluestone played a lot of really obscure material. We weren't. We, we were never ever a top forty band. Yeah, I know. Or anything yeah. like that. And and same with Gary and I. We, like the the, the range of material we, we play is is quite eclectic. It's a bit, you know it's weird. And there's no, uh, you know, we, we never work out a set. I've never written a set li- set list in my life. Because um, I, I find writing. Well, then it's you. It must <laughs> be you. Well, it's a, it's a choice of songs. If I like the songs, you know, like it, 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 it all gets down to the music in the end. But um, or good looking drummer, and it, you know, it's always Creech is always the one. He was the shocker. The thing is, I know for a fact that you're still working um, all around Melbourne, but it's particularly sort of um, out what I'll call our side of town, which mm. is the um, Mooney Ponds Essendon area. Yeah. But uh, you also have had for now. I'm I'm not going to say because I keep thinking everything was yesterday. You have an amazing uh, music. music my, gu- shop. My, my guitar, guitar shop. shop. Yeah, yeah. It's in um, you kill the road, isn't it? You kill the road, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's always been a dream, you know. And uh, basically, I turned sixty and thought so I either got to retire or do that, and I just started a business with a friend um, who's not directly involved in the business, but. We went in and uh, his requirement was, uh, he said, I don't care what you do as long as the people walk in the shop and go, wow. So I've got this little shop and people walk in the shop and go, wow. All right, we'll be back soon. Rock down. I'm with Terry Dean. Hey, Wendy. Last year, I think it was last year, was the first time that a whole lot of people had um, reformed for a go show it was a live performance. It was the 46th anniversary. It was an unusual year, but the 46th anniversary of the Go Show. Um, Whose was, idea was that? Dennis Smith? Uh, Dennis Smith, yeah. So it was all the usual suspects. Dennis Smith and Jeff Joseph and um, Wally. Was Wally there. Bishop? Wally Bishop was, was there. And um, and it was Ian Turpy's last show. And oh, I've got the, my... Was that my, the last time you spent any time with Ian? Yeah, and my, I've got a great memo. Someone took a, there, there's no film available. They just did, they, they film, filmed the show just very basically and I've got a copy in it and uh, and uh, I've got Ian introducing me on the show, which is fantastic. Oh, and, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, he was, he's... Uh, he was a special person. He was, you know, and I certainly miss him a lot. But right back to the Go Show originally, we, we were doing those, all those things. And um, yeah, there was, um, there's Normie Rowe and um, Ronnie Charles, Johnny Young, Ronnie Burns, the Twilights. All of, all of, all of the, st- the Twilights. Twilights are... reformed for that. Um, Marcy. Marcy, yeah, of course. Marcy Marcy's Jones there. and the Cookies. Yeah, Buddy England. Buddy England. And uh, oh, Colin um, Cook. Colin Cook, I was about to say Colin, Colin Cook. Cook. Bev? Bev Harrell. Bev Harrell was fantastic. She still looks the same. Bev Harrell. Yeah. Um, I, I actually met Bev. I, I, quite a long time ago and I couldn't believe she is so cute isn't she and yeah. just the tiniest little she's like a she's little tiny. rocket she's, 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 she was on stage and I'm standing at the side of the stage watching her <laughs> and she just moves great she's got this little girl with this great you know and, uh, well we, we don't mention age but she's got a but um, amazing voice Oh yeah, and still looks. She looks. Yes, yeah, looks fantastic. It must have been something in the water at the original Go Show or something. I don't know what it is, but everyone's looking pretty, pretty gorgeous. I did have a classic moment on the Go Show that that, that I never got a chance to. Uh, I was going to try and rectify it in the Go Show because we used to have a thing at the end with Alan Field called the Top Ten. Yeah. And Alan would be in the middle, and be five performers either side, and instead of showing clips or videos as they do now of the top ten, each one of the performers would sing, you know, number one, number two, and, <laughs> and, so, and uh, Billy Thorpe had a hit with Poison Ivy at the time, and that 
it got to me and my song was Poison Ivy, I get up and all the girls are screaming and the, the strangers who were the band were probably about 50 feet away over the other side. And I got up and all I heard was the drum going like that, no note or no, no cue. So I started singing and then I, then I heard the band and I was totally in a different in, key. In a different key to the band. So I've got stop, stop. So, and in those days you couldn't actually stop tape. The show, no, it was, it was... show was recorded, but uh, you would, each segment, each 15 minute segment was done start to finish, no, no stopping or editing because they couldn't edit. So uh, I had to go, well they could physically edit, with, that's what they'd cut the piece of tape out and put it in. So I had to go back the next week uh, on the Saturday and redo a bit, just a straight camera shot scene. <laughs> she comes in like a rules. <laughs> but at least you got to do it. I got to, uh, but yeah, they weren't happy about it. Cost <laughs> cost them a fortune. But the, you come, you know, I get introduced, I stand up, and then there's this headshot, and it goes back to the off shot, and there's all the other performers all falling about. You know, I'm, I'm out there totally distressed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about uh, what you've got coming up and uh, you're still performing with Gary. I, yep. I know that recently you had um, a, a show that was so, so sold out that it's been rebooked and you've already got something like 200 people on the waiting list this time. So nothing's changed from your side of things. You're still packing the venues out. Yeah, it's good. We, we do, um, like, it's, that's the Eston Football Club that uh, we're doing that soon. That's really good. We do a lot of other, you know, Sunday afternoon things and stuff like that. I like I like some of the ones where there's not a lot of people. That's great. <laughs> you can go along. It's all and just very well for be you. Very to, casual. It's all very well for you to say that there's probably a few people out there playing in bands that never get more than ten people going. Oh, I just want to punch that guy in the <laughs> face. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the what the secret is, but I, I think the 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 main secret is just is to Play music you enjoy, but not be self-indulgent. Right. You know, you, you've got to entertain the crowd anyway. So at, at the end, and and uh, I always put it down to the last ten minutes. You know, because if you if, if you make the last ten minutes work, you're you're fine. That's what people remember. Yeah, because no one's going to remember the, the first three hours. Yeah. So it was it was it was always with those gigs. It was always, uh, and especially Demarco's with Bluestone, because it was always these set times. You had to have you had to stop for supper. So you'd be. You have to stop. Oh, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, stop for supper, and how to come the... The Palma, raffle tickets? The raffle and Parmigiana. Oh, yeah. Parmigiana, that sounds like luxury oh. hours was curried sausages. <laughs> no, Parmigiana. <laughs> curried sausages. It was a shocker. I still know the ladies that, that worked in DeMarco's in the, at the back, in Rita and and, uh, and Maureen. They're still around Essendon, and uh, I used to watch them out the back. They dip, they dip it in the oil. <laughs> on the back and over the back and pour this sauce over the top and the smell at 10 o'clock was horrendous uh, but uh, it tasted good though. so can um, can we all check out uh, is there a website Dean and yeah, Grothers website yeah there's uh, deanandgrothers.com we're, we're we're very good with keeping everything the same name we never thought up anything clever <laughs> we went through lots of names for, for ourselves but never and Dean and Grothers if it ain't stuck. broke Hey, no. If it ain't broke. Too late now. Well, um, you don't need good luck with your gigs because um, it was, it's not luck anyway, but you've always had um, great success with your gigs. Give my love to Gary. I will. And um, all the best with your shop as well. You don't need good luck with that either because it's a wonderful place. So um, thanks for coming in and having oh, a chat with us. It's been lovely to catch up, Wendy. It's been too long. Too long? Yeah. Okay, we'll go to the pub now. Yeah, we'll go to the pub. <laughs> See you next time. Thank you very much, Terry Dean. Thank you.